Hello, my name is Lori Elke. Watercolor is my favorite medium to paint in, and I thought with Holy Week coming up and thinking about Jesus' death and resurrection uh, that I would do something that would relate. So today, in watercolor, I painted the crown of thorns. Uh, if you would like to try this, it's kind of a cool one to do just to help us remember what, what all is coming up. And um, you could do this in something other than watercolor. I mean, you're welcome to do it just using light like, colored pencils, or you could do it with another color kind of paint. Uh, but I had decided to use watercolor. And I really only use three colors for this. I use brown and blue and red. So if you can see too, um, I did add some red for the blood of Jesus. That's an optional step. But if you'd like to do that too, feel free to add that as well. Um, so if you'd like to paint the crown of thorns too, please uh, enjoy this video and give it a shot and let me know how it goes, all right? Thank you so much for watching. For my watercolor painting today, I am using Master's Touch watercolor pad. I got it at Hobby Lobby for $4.99. This is an 8 by 8 inch pad. They come in all sizes. And then for my paints, I'm using the Shinhan Pro watercolor tube set. This is what it looks like. I got this off Amazon. Um, they have lots of different sets and tubes. So I like them because their colors are really bright. But you can use any tube or tray set of watercolors. Um, especially just to kind of play around. But yeah, I squirted the paints in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. For my brush, I'm just using a round brush. It's a mask or Simply Simon's brush. It's a number six, it has a round tip, okay? So I'm gonna start off to make a crown of thorns by using some Paint here. This is like a burnt sienna color, so it's kind of like a reddish brown. And then I may mix a little bit of burnt umber, just like a darker brown, with it. And I'm just going to start by drawing kind of the main part of the crown. So I'm going to do a circle. It's not going to be a perfect circle, and I want it to stay pretty thin. So I'm going to pull that around and connect it. While that circle is still wet, I'm just gonna drop in a little bit of ultramarine blue just to kind of darken it and give it some, some interest. So kind of here and there, I'm gonna drop this in to add some interest to that and make it so it just doesn't look like it's all one um, color. It has a little bit more excitement to it. And then I'm also going to add a couple more strands of this so that'll kind of maybe weave in and out of this one so I'm going to do a second one like this and it's just going to go around and it can kind of cross over that one at times notice I kind of drag through some of that dark blue color with it okay and again while that's still wet I may drop in a little bit more of the ultramarine blue and the reason I do blue, um, blue mixed with brown can kind of turn a little bit grayish, as you can see, uh, and it just kind of gives it a little bit more. You could probably do, you know, we'll try a little bit of green too, like maybe these branches still have a little bit of light and then at times, so I can throw just a tiny hint of green in there too. Not too much, okay? I'm going to go ahead and add another strand too, so it's not just the two, so a little bit of burnt sienna and burnt umber. And I'm gonna pull that through here. Get that connected in places. That. I'm using a little bit more water with these just so that they stay a little wet so that it gives me some time to connect some of the uh, or to throw in some of those other colors. So I think right here, I, I like what I've got. I might, this is a little bit too big of a gap, so I might add a little bit more. Uh, another like little strand that kind of breaks off in here and, and like that. In here too, I don't like how much of a gap that's in there, so I might just add an extra little strand 
that connects there. And there's kind of my main start for my crown of thorns. Okay? Anytime that there's a little too much brown, I break it up with some other color just so that it's not too much of the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and add some of that blue-brown mixture to darken that area a little bit. And then I will start in with the thorns. Now I'm going to stay with my same brush because the tip on this brush is actually pretty, pretty small. So I'm going to go ahead and add the thorns with the same tip. And I'm going to use the same colors because these are just thorns going off of the same branches. And as I do those, I'm going to really hold my brush up and down. And I'm just going to start, start at the, the branch and then just pull a line that goes in. Okay, see how small my line can get? I can fatten it up just a little bit towards the branch, but I want obviously the uh, end of the thorn to be pretty skinny, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that in different parts here of my crown. I'm gonna start by doing the ones that go towards the inside. And you can see like this one's already dry, so as I add this thorn in here, it's just gonna look like a little um, section that's kind of connected to the top. So if I want it to blend in, I can just kind of re-wet this area so that the thorn looks like it's connected more. I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple more. I wanna try not to make them too evenly spaced, so like let's, let's add another maybe a shorter one right in here so that it's a little bit more variety. Maybe I'll do one that kind of goes more sideways here. Um, I'll do another one that's kind of close to it that connects to one of these inside branches. I can kind of vary that a little bit. Um, some of mine, maybe I'll do a little bit more blue. Some of them I'll stick to the more brown color. This is going to be more of a blue thorn right here. And again, I can kind of connect it in like this with some of my other branches. I'll do this one. A little bit more blue. I'm going to throw one down here that connects to one of the outside branches like that. And just kind of keep adding more and more thorns as I go around. They can be different heights, they can be different angles. This one's going to be this way. So they all should be exactly the same. Once I've got some heading in. I also want to get some that are heading outside of the crown of thorns. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing some that go towards the outside edge as well. So there's one. We'll add another one there. Again, you can kind of add some more to the original branch if, if you want it to look a little bit more connected. I'm going to add one kind of going this way. Think about maybe using some of different lengths. Some can be longer, some can be more short. The idea is just not to be like too consistent with, like too measured, so that they're not all perfectly spaced or at all the same direction. So I'm going to add some going all the way around the outside. You can have some that overlap each other too. I might do that as I kind of work on the inside section. I'm just kind of re-wetting my colors. Every once in a while throwing a little bit of blue in there. And adding more and more little thorns as I go around. If it helps too, I mean, you can turn this as you work if you're finding that certain angle works better than other angles. So now I'm going to <clears throat> work on maybe having some that overlap, like some coming from like whatever branch is in the middle. It can, they can be going a bunch of different directions too, just to make it so it doesn't look like they're all either in or out. So I'm going to add some that just kind of go towards the middle or whatever. So I'm, I'm just going to kind of work my way around filling out 
thorns and adding those details. So I'll start maybe on this side right here and I'm going to throw a couple of extra thorns in that are coming maybe from the middle here. I'm going to throw another one maybe over here. A smaller one. I'll do one maybe that overlaps. We'll have to go down this way. And I can throw maybe one over here too. So some of them will just almost act like a little bridge from one to the other. It just kind of helps fill in the space. You can throw in just some other little spots along here. And yeah, just kind of play around with it and, and fill it in as soon as you think it needs it. Some areas can be more full than others. So I've added a bunch of other thorns and I feel like this is a good amount of fullness. The only thing else um, I'm going to do with the branches is I'm going to look at areas where I've got branches that cross over each other and what I'd like to do is decide okay which branch is going to be on top and I'm going to take some paint, um, some of my brown and my blue and I'm gonna to try to darken the ones that go under the top. So I'll show you what I mean. Right here, for example, I want this one to be on top. So I'm just going to darken the two that go under it. So it looks like that branch kind of is above those two. So now you can see that that one pops up. Um, anywhere that I see a couple of branches going over under each other, I'm going to try to pick one to be on top and then make it look like the other ones are crossing underneath just by darkening them a little bit under where the top one goes. Okay, so I'm going to kind of just play around with that. I'm using just a little bit of water and not a lot of paint. This is something you don't have to do necessarily. I mean, you could just kind of leave it like this, but it'll make it look a little bit more realistic. So here I've got a bunch of branches that are crossing, so I'm going to do this one on top and darken this one so it looks like it goes underneath that one. And then right here, I think I'm going to do this one on top, so I'll darken this one and kind of bring it out so that it looks like it goes under. Right here too, I'm going to have pick one to go on top. You just kind of go around and, and make it look like they overlap each other in the correct spots. I guess. Kind of play around with that. So at least hint at it in different places. If it's not perfect all the way around, it's okay. Alright, the other thing I wanted to do was I am going to add blood to my picture, so this maybe is the crown of thorns after it was on Jesus' head. You could leave it like this and say, okay, this is done, but in case you wanted to add the red for the blood, um, you can do that. So I'm going to show you how you would do that. Um, I'm going to use my same brush, and I'm going to get it in the red, and I'm just going to pick a couple spots um, that would probably be red, especially like the ones on the inside. I'm going to throw just a little bit of red paint on them and the red I mean it should show up pretty well if you use enough paint and not much water so I really did not use a whole lot of water in this um, I'm just kind of adding a little bit of red especially to the ones that were on the inside because those would have been in contact with his head um, and I mean I have a darker red too this this other one is so bright probably be a little bit darker and then you may want to add just like on a, some of the more inside branches a couple of red spots to show um, the blood again if you don't want to add the red you can leave it like so because this makes it a little bit more dramatic I guess but if you do this is how you would do it and then I may just um, add a couple of like splatters too of red 
and to do that I'm going to switch from this brush. I, I have two options. I could use kind of a thick brush like this to kind of add a little splatter or actually my favorite way to use um, to make a splatter is to use a toothbrush, an old toothbrush. So every time we switch toothbrushes I take the old ones to use for painting. And I'm going to go ahead and get my toothbrush in the water and then I'm going to get it wet in the paint in the red and I'm going to hold it up and down and then just use my thumb to add some splatter. And this is just a real subtle splatter. If I get a couple big drops, that's fine. It's just kind of like the blood that he shed for us. So again, this is an optional step. You don't have to do this, but I think it just kind of impacts or, or shows kind of the blood that he gave for us and for our sins, so it's kind of a very dramatic effect, I guess. If the spots get a little bit too big, you can always just kind of tap them with a, a brush and that kind of lightens, or um, a, a cloth, or paper towel, Kleenex, so I'll kind of make them a little bit more smooth. But I'm gonna leave it like that, so you have this, this crown of thorns all done. And then if you wanted to, you could write you know, a word or something in the middle. But I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. So you want to make a crown of thorns, feel free to do one similar to this with or without the addition of the blood on the thorns and then the splatter, okay? There you go.